Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math, SAT Tips and Techniques. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at direct and inverse variation. Um, this is a concept that shows, a lot, shows up a lot on the SAT. Um, are you okay? Okay. Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math, SAT Tricks. No. <laughs> You're confusing me. Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math, SAT Tips and Techniques video. Um, in this video, we're going to look at direct and inverse variation. Um, this is a way that, of describing how two quantities change in relation to each other, and you'll see it in a lot of SAT uh, math questions. Um, the first kind of variation is direct variation. This is when quantity A increases, quantity B increases along with it. And along the same lines, if quantity A decreases, quantity B decreases along with it. So both are moving up and down in relation to, e in relation to each other. Um, and the, the formula that they want you to use for this is y equals kx. Where y is one quantity and x is another quantity. Um, and here they have this relationship where they're tied to each other, where if x gets larger, it gets multiplied by a certain constant, k, and y uh, gets larger as well. Um, whenever we're talking about direct variation, k is always going to be positive. That's just kind of how these problems are written, um, so that they'll increase along with each other. Um, in another video, we talked about rate problems. And rate is a form of direct variation, um, because you can see that the distance formula, distance equals rate times time, is basically the same as this direct variation formula. Um, so direct variation looks kind of something like this, uh, a graph going in the upwards direction. Um, so depending on what kind of problem, it, problem you're dealing with, you might have a graph to look at. And if it's going up, then it's direct variation. Uh, or you might be given a table like this, where we can see numbers of x increasing and numbers of y increasing as well. Um, so both of those are signs that you're dealing with direct variation. And this is the formula that you need to be using. The other form, uh, inverse variation. Uh, inverse is when A is increasing, B is decreasing. And along the same lines, when A is decreasing, B is increasing. Basically, they're going opposite each other. And the formula that they want you to use for this is Y equals K over X. Um, so we'll take a look at what this means. Um, this is inverse variation. See, the line is going down. And it's kind of a slope. Um, and if you have a table like that, you can see that numbers of x are clearly getting larger, while your numbers of y are clearly getting smaller. Um, let's look at a few sample problems which deal with using these formulas to predict outcome, um, kind of in the vein that you'll see on the SAT. Again, um, direct and inverse variation, you'll see all different uses of these concepts on the SAT. Um, here are some pretty general questions, uh, two pretty general questions, one dealing with each of them. Um, that'll help you uh, figure out how, when things are in direct variation or in inverse variation, how to apply these concepts and figure out what they're talking about. Um, so this first one says, exercise and number of calories burned vary directly. So we're dealing with direct variation. Um, usually when you're dealing with um, direct or inverse variation, it'll state explicitly in the problem. It'll say they, they're directly proportional or something like that. Um, exercising for 20 minutes will burn 150 calories. I, I made that number up. It might not actually be that. <laughs> but how many calories will exercising for an hour burn? So an hour is 60 minutes. So we do, since we're dealing with direct variation, we'll write down our formula y equals kx. And we have two quantities, minutes spent exercising and calories. And they're both increasing and decreasing um, in relationship to each other. Um, so what we want to solve for is what this value k is. So we're given, uh, for 20 minutes, we burn 150 calories. So let's plug, that, uh, plug those in. And let's call the number of calories burned y and minutes x. Um, so now to solve for k, you just divide 150 by 20. Um, 
and I'm going to leave that unsimplified, just as 150 over 20. And now we can solve for the number of calories when we uh, exercise for 60 minutes. Um, so again, I said x was minutes. So we'll have y equals our k value, which is 150 over 20, times 60. Um, and the reason I left this unsimplified, we can just cancel out 20, and that gives us a remainder of 3. And 150 times 3 is 450. So our answer, uh, 450 calories, include my units. So in an hour, we'll burn 450 calories. All right, the next uh, exercise. The cost of admission to a show varies inversely with the number of tickets bought. Um, so that means if you go with a larger group, your price is going to go down. Uh, for a group of 12, tickets are $4 each. How much would each ticket cost for a group of 20? So again, the problem states explicitly that we're dealing with inverse variation, so we can write down our formula. y equals k over x. Um, and now we want to substitute the values that were given into y and x. Let's see. Because the number of people is the one that's increasing, I'm going to make that x because whatever. And I'm going to make y the cost of the ticket. So tickets originally $4 each. And that was 12 people. So if we solve for k, k equals 12 times 4, or 48. Now, how much would each ticket cost for a group of 20? Let's use your same formula. y equals k equals 48 over, and our x is now 20. And 48 divided by 20. Uh, that's 24 over 10, so that's 2.4. So tickets would cost $2.40 per person. All right, I hope this has been a helpful review of direct and inverse variation. Um, for more videos, check out our channel, and good luck with the rest of your studying and on the SAT.